Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 12.7, Probability of Compound Events, Part 1. Jumping right into things with our very first vocab word of the section, compound event. A compound event is an event that combines two or more events using the word and or the word or. Now I know these two words and or or sound very familiar or kind of sound like the same thing, like they're doing the same thing. But if we think about it again, if I have water and I have a soda, I have them both. But with the word or, I have a water or I have a soda. I either have the water and I don't have the soda or I have the soda and I don't have the water, but I highly recommend that you take the water because it's a little bit healthier than the soda. Next vocab word is an independent event. An independent event is the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of another. So if I flip a coin, that does not affect the dice that I roll next. Or if I roll a dice and then flip a coin, those two events do not affect each other. So then when we have independent events, we take the probability, this represents the probability right here of the first event times the probability of the second event. Now this is just algebraically, this is how you would write it in algebra. Let's go ahead and take a peek at some examples and we will write it like this. So for number one, we have a bag contains six black marbles, nine blue marbles, four yellow marbles, and two green marbles. A marble is reselected. Now, ladies and gentlemen, big word here, replace. Whenever we hear replace, that's going to define independent events. Replaced equals independent events events. And second marble is selected. Find the probability, so we're now we're looking for the probability of selecting a black marble and then a yellow marble. So how do we write this down? First, we need what? For probability, we need the total. The total marbles, we add all this up, is 6 plus 9 plus 4 plus 2, which adds up to 21. Then we are looking for the probability of the black marble and then we're going to take that times the probability of the yellow marble. Now we have to look how many black marbles do we have? We have six black marbles so it's going to be six over and then what's our total? It's going to be six over 21 and then we're going to take that times now the probability of a yellow marble. How many yellow marbles do we have? We have four yellow marbles. So it's going to be four over, what do you think the total is going to be? 21. So now you punch that in your calculator. You come up with eight over 147 after it's all said and done, after you simplify it. So this would be a perfect answer. And I would like if you would simplify the fraction and leave it just as a fraction. If you do change it to a percent, Make sure that you move the decimal over twice so it's 5.4%. So 8 divided by 147 is 5.4%. Both of these are the correct answer. You can use either one. Let's try the next one, number two. We have Ray is flying from Birmingham to Chicago on a flight with 90% on time record. On the same day, the chances of rain in Denver are predicted to be 50%. What is the probability that race light will be on time and that it will rain in Denver? Now, does raining in Denver have anything to do with Ray's flight? It does not. Since they do not affect each other, affect each other, that means they are independent events. So what do we have to do with independent events? We have to multiply them together. Well, what are we going to multiply together? We have to figure out what? The probability that race flight will be on time and that it will rain in Denver. So we would write this, the probability of being on time and then we would take that times the probability of rain in Denver. So now what is the probability of being on time? It is 90%. So I'm going to have 90% or what is 90%? That is 0.9. 
and then we are going to take that times, what is the probability of it going to rain? That's 50%, so it would be times 50%, or times 0.5. So when we multiply these together, it's going to be 0.45. But ladies and gentlemen, I do not, I do not want this as a decimal. I want this as a percent or a fraction. So 0.45 is the same thing as 45% after you move the decimal over twice. So 45% is what we are looking for. With one more vocab word of the section, we have dependent events. Dependent events are outcomes of one event affects. Now it affects the outcome of the other events. So if we wrote it algebraically, we have the probability of A and B, and then it's the probability of A times the probability of B following A, and we will get into what this means in our examples. But dependent events, they affect each other. One event depends on the next event. So let's look at some examples. Here we have at a school carnival, winners in a ring toss game are randomly given a prize from a bag that contains four sunglasses, six hairbrushes, and five key change. Three prizes are randomly chosen from a bag and not, ladies and gentlemen, not replaced is the key word. That means that it's going to be dependent events. We are asked to find each probability. So first thing we have to do when we are asked to find probability is find the total. Well, we have four sunglasses plus six hairbrushes and five keychains. We add those all up. That gives us a total of 15. Now for part A, we are asked to find the probability of sunglasses, then a hairbrush, then a keychain. Now be very careful though, because it's dependent events that we're following one another. So the probability of drawing sunglasses, well we have four sunglasses out of a total of 15. We're gonna take that times, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. All right, pay attention here. We have a hairbrush now. We already picked out the sunglasses. We set the sunglasses on the side. The sunglasses now are not in the bag. So hairbrush, we still have six hairbrushes in the bag, but now what's the total amount in the bag? If this one pair of sunglasses is outside, how many are left in the bag? Or how many items are left in the bag? Only 14 items are left in the bag. And then we take that times keychains. How many keychains are in the bag? We still have five keychains left in the bag, but how many items are in the bag? We have sunglasses sitting outside the bag, then we have a hairbrush sitting outside the bag, and then we're looking for keychains. So how many items are still left in the bag? There are 13 items still left in the bag. We multiply those together to get four out of 91 for our answer for a dependent event, or if you punched it into your calculator and wanted a percent, that would be 4.4%. Either answer I will take, but make sure you either have a percentage or a fraction. Now for part B, we have a hairbrush, hairbrush, not a hairbrush. So we're starting all over, but we're still not replacing the item. So what's the probability that I first draw a hairbrush? Well, how many hairbrushes do I have? I have six. Six out of still my total of 15. I'm going to take that times, ladies and gentlemen. Now I pick out my hairbrush. I set it right on the side. And it is no longer in the bag. How many hairbrushes are in the bag now? There are only five hairbrushes in the bag over how many items in the bag. There are 14 items in the bag. Then I take that times, now ladies and gentlemen, here it's tricky, not a hairbrush. How many items are not a hairbrush? Sunglasses aren't a hairbrush, and keychains aren't a hairbrush, so I'm gonna add those together. So actually I'm gonna put it over here, four plus five not hairbrushes, so it's going to be nine over a total of what? 13 items that are still in the bag. Multiply those together, punch, punch, punch in your calculator. That's going to be 9 over 91 for your answer, or 9.9%. .9 Either of these, 
is very legal quality right here. But ladies and gentlemen, make sure we're looking for not replaced or replaced. That will define whether it's independent or dependent. But ladies and gentlemen, that does it for section 12.7, Probability of Compound Events, Part 1. Good day!